Greetings, Reloaders! I'm Funky Monkey, and I'll be your operator as Matrix Month continues. Subsequently, welcome to another episode of Isn't It Time? Yes, it took them three years, and several setbacks, and even a couple of very unfortunate deaths, but those wacky Wachowskis finally delivered the goods in 2003. And audiences lapped it up. But then fatigue set in. But we'll get to that. Let us instead begin by introducing today's subject, The Matrix Reloaded. Released in the summer of 2003, The Matrix Reloaded continues the tale of a post-apocalyptic underground revolution and takes it to strange new places. The resistance movement learn of a way to finally end the war, but it'll take everything they've got to stop a new threat from emerging. So let's jack in again and prepare to enter The Matrix. Reloaded. Neo's been having nightmares of late. Nightmares of his lover Trinity's death. But there's no time for idle chat, as inside The Matrix there's an important meeting. The machine nation is digging a tunnel. From the surface, Four miles straight down, down to the last human city, Zion. Above the meeting, a mysterious stranger has a package for our hero. But what can it possibly mean? I know, but I ain't telling. Don't worry, folks. All will be revealed in the next few minutes. And when the agents show up, Neo fights them off in short order. And so the Nebuchadnezzar returns to Zion where Commander Locke, security overseer of Zion, chews out Morpheus for telling a ship not to return. Meanwhile, we're properly introduced to the Neb's new operator, Link. But oh dear, Smith survived, and now he's replicating! And the poor soul that Smith overwrote was another rebel, Bane, which means that there's a Smith loose in the real world! Neo converses with the Oracle. The Oracle is actually a program from the Machine Nation, and her true purpose is yet to be revealed. But their time is cut short when Smith arrives. Smith wants a piece of Neo, but our hero is having none of it. And they fight. Neo manages to hold his own for a while, but the odds gradually increase against him, and eventually he goes down. But Neo, of course, is the one, and escapes to the sky. Which just goes to show, my friends, that victory depends on more than just how many smiths you have. Meanwhile, in Zion, the Council asks two ships to rendezvous with the Nebuchadnezzar. Back inside the Matrix, Neo and co go to meet with the Merovingian. Another program, a dealer in valuable things, and current employer of a very special keymaker. He, of course, would prefer to keep the keymaker under lock and key. <laughs> lock and key. Terrible pun, I know. But I do so enjoy terrible puns. His wife, Persephone, is more forthcoming. And so, the keymaker is duly retrieved. And while Neo handles the Merovingian's retinue of exiles, Morpheus and Trinity attempt to deliver the Keymaker via the dangerous freeway. Long story short, they succeed, but only thanks to Neo's last minute rescue. And so it goes that with a very special key, Neo makes his way through a very special door. But then he encounters someone who isn't so special. Trinity has a very important job to do. Trinity must take the place of a crew that failed to carry out their mission and shut down power for 27 city blocks to disable an alarm that triggers a bomb that keeps all but the most determined people from reaching the source of the Matrix. Back in the Infinite Corridor, Neo makes his way to the source and meets the Architect. Again, I don't like to do this, but this sequence is full of big words and it deliberately tries to confuse you. In short, 
Neo is the sixth one, the prophecy is a lie, and if Neo doesn't return to the source, then everyone dies. Or so the architect believes anyway. Outside the source, Trinity meets an agent, and Neo's dream looks set to come to pass. But the one won't be denied, and Neo speeds to Trinity's rescue. And just in the nick of time, our hero catches his love. Well done, sir. But the story doesn't end there, as the one reveals the awful truth to a disbelieving Morpheus. And then, the Nebuchadnezzar is destroyed by Sentinels. But Neo has one last trick up his sleeve. And so our movie ends with Neo in a coma, on board the Mjolnir. But oh dear, the Mjolnir also picked up Bane. That can't be good. Is it time you gave Reloaded another chance? In truth, The Matrix Reloaded isn't so critically panned as one might expect. It is filled with action, suspense, romance, and all of the surface elements that made the original so very, very cool. But somehow, the spirit is missing. Though it is replaced with another titanic struggle of good versus evil, albeit more obvious in the form of the one against the many. And shockingly, I would say that it isn't time you gave this movie another chance. Not without considering revolutions as well, that is. But we'll get to that next week. Anyway. Thanks for watching, and join me next week when Matrix Month continues with The Matrix Revolutions. Don't miss it!